Because I travel the United States primarily alone, I get a lot of comments, emails, texts, etc. from subscribers and followers that ask me, what's the scariest situation you've ever found yourself in? Well, that's a tough one because I have two main hobbies. One of them is astrophotography and the other one is searching for owls. And both of these hobbies demand that you go to the most desolate place you can in the dark and hang out. So I've got a lot of scary stories, etc., wacky things that happen, but this story I'm going to tell you, I had a witness with me as well as a 90-pound pit bull terrier, and this incident actually ran us off the mountain in the middle of the night. We abandoned camp. We got out of there. So if you want to know the only thing that ever scared me off a campsite ever, you're going to want to sit back, you're going to want to relax, and you're most definitely going to want to check this out. That was easy. And before we start this video, I'm going to ask you to hit that subscribe button as well as the little bell right next to it so you're notified of all new videos. Here we go. So like I said in the beginning of this video, I have gotten a ridiculous amount of requests, comments, text messages, etc. from subscribers asking me to explain the scariest story from the road that I could possibly come up with. Now, usually people would expect something about me driving on a trail and tri tipping the truck over or almost tipping it over, which has happened, or me being in an incredibly remote location, doing something completely ordinary and injuring myself unbelievably, or perhaps running into a wild animal in the middle of the night or in the middle of the day, because that does absolutely happen without fail. But I've thought about this question for quite a while, and it brings me back to about nine years ago. And in this particular story, I wasn't alone. I was with my ex at the time and her 90-pound pit bull terrier named Pippa. So I have a witness who also recalls the story exactly as I do. And we had a dog there as kind of a emotional or spiritual barometer, we'll call it, because Animals know when something's wrong, and Pippa absolutely knew. So let's get to it. Here's a quick qualifier about my ex. She's a 20-year veteran at Mass General Hospital. She's been a professional for a long time, and she's the only person to ever actually drive my truck besides me. Passenger, a little. Big drop, big drop. Easy, you got it. Come on down. This is easy. That was easy. Indeed it was. So nine years ago, I didn't yet drive a Toyota. I had drove a Jeep Liberty that I had modified as far as I possibly could modify it. And this was prior to me starting the Jailbreak Overlander channel. So I was doing my own thing. So there's not a lot of pictures or video of it. And it's kind of irrelevant. 
but this is what we took to the Green Mountains in Vermont. Now, living in New England, we had decided to go on a camping trip, kind of on the spur of the moment, and I decided, hey, let's hit Vermont, because recently I had been up there four-wheeling by some caves. Vermont is amazing because it's a great expanse of land that is incredibly heavily forested, but there's also lots and lots of rivers, ponds, lakes, and caves, which is insane. The caves in Vermont are pretty phenomenal, and I haven't explored them as much as I'd like to, and at some point, hopefully I will. I always seem to find myself out west when we have this incredible terrain right here in New England. But I talked to my ex. We decided to head to the Green Mountain National Forest, and I can't find it to save my life right now. But I found a camping spot, I figured out the coordinates, and we headed there. And we drove and drove and drove and drove for quite a while, and it was getting dark. We didn't actually get to the campground till around 9.30 at night. Now remember, this is nine years ago, so I wasn't as hardcore overlanding as I am now. So I needed to find a campground up here, plus I didn't know the area. But when we finally found the campground, there was a few glaring red flags that I noticed... But it was already dark and I didn't care. Now the first red flag I noticed was the camp, the parking spaces by the campground were completely overgrown, like no one's been there in a long time. Okay, cool. I like that. Less people, better for me. The other thing that I noticed was broken glass on the ground from an automobile. So somebody was either breaking into cars or breaking out. One of the two. But you know what? It's dark. We've been driving for... I think it was 95 minutes, and it was dark, so it was time to set up tents, and I did. I got right on it. Not only did I set up the tents, but I also put up a tarp over the tent in case it started raining during the night, and I also dug a drainage ditch around the tent because of our location. Sadly, I don't have any original footage of this. All I have is her testimony and mine, and that's what I'm going to give you. But I set up for the long haul, and then, of course, even this late, I gathered up a bunch of firewood and got a roaring fire going because I always have a fire going at a camp no matter what the weather, temperature, etc. It's just a thing I do. So before I tell you exactly what happened that night, I'm going to show you a response that she gave me. I sent her an email, a text message, and simply said, Hey, what do you remember about that night in the Green Mountains? And left it at that. I hadn't spoken to her in about six or eight months. We broke up amicably. We still talk, etc., but not very often. We both went two separate directions, which is why she's now the ex. At any rate, this was her response. Now try to imagine me with a more feminine voice. She wrote, I'll never forget that night, our late night trek to the Green Mountain Forest in Vermont. The night we got ran off the mountain in the middle of the night. What I can't forget is the fear I felt of the crazy noises and sudden overwhelming feeling of dread that overcame us. One thing about being with you no matter where we were was I always felt safe. But not this time. The moment I sensed your uneasiness, I wanted out of there. Then to make matters worse, Pippa bailed, just turned tail and jumped into the jeep. All I remember hearing was like branches snapping, as if something or someone was warning us that we were in their space. After watching you tear down the camp and stuffing it and us into the jeep, we rolled out, to put it mildly, and then we pulled over, because the sky looked otherworldly filled with more luminaries and activity than we could have ever imagined seeing. And then it got even crazier because there was a tree filled with glowing things, almost like eyes. And we couldn't tell what the heck we were looking at. And it was the oddest thing too because it was so late and we had no clue where we were or where we were going to stay because we had just got run out of the campsite. But... As soon as we came down the mountain, 
We found this tiny hole in the wall motel that just happened to be there. It was an answer to our prayers, literally. But then, the next morning, it got even crazier. I'm trying to sound like she would if you were actually listening to her voice. But when we woke up the next day, the town that we were in was literally covered with Bigfoot paraphernalia, Bigfoot statues, Bigfoot on everybody's door, everywhere. Now, we hadn't seen this coming in the night before whatsoever at all. So, Richie goes into a restaurant and asks, he places an order and then just casually says, you guys ever have anything strange going on around here? And the woman's response was like, oh, you mean like Bigfoot? It was just no big deal. Anyways, I hope this is a good recollection for you. And maybe you can use it in your video. Well, I did use it in a video, and I appreciate you taking the time to remember that for me. And the funny thing is, is I remember the story the same exact way. I had decided late in the afternoon to, hey, let's go up to the Green Mountains. I had been up there a week or two prior, hanging out and doing the Dorset Caves. So we decided to head back up there. I looked up a campground on the National Forest Service site because I don't know the area as far as camping, etc. And I didn't want to get jammed up. So <clears throat> I get the coordinates. We follow the road, like I said previously. We head up there and I set up the tent. Like I said, I pulled in the parking lot, like the little dirt parking lot they give you. And then you walk down a trail to the campground, etc. And right off the rip, I noticed that it was entirely, completely grown over. And not only that, there was broken glass from car automobiles laying on the ground. Not a ridiculous amount, but more than you'd find in a parking lot in the city. And I thought that was strange. But again, it was late. And we it was like, like 9.45, 10 o'clock at night, if I remember correctly. And I had to hustle. I set up the tent, I dug a ditch around it, I put up a tarp over it in case it rained that night, and then I started gathering firewood and I got a huge fire going. All this took me about 45 minutes, so I'm committed to this. The whole time, you can't hear anything because I'm setting up the tent, I'm gathering wood, I'm starting the fire, blah, 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 we're talking, the dog's doing her thing, etc. And as soon as we decided to settle down, I heard what I can only describe as a worried mother ringing, like somebody's mother worried, wringing a dish towel in her hands, if that makes any sense. I couldn't find a meme to show you what I was talking about. So we brought in a paid actor to have him reenact a worried mother wringing a dish towel in her hands. Except the dish towel was large logs. And it was just crushing them. And I mean, it was right near us. You couldn't miss it. The thing about it is, right before that happened, if I'm remembering this exactly, it's one or the other, this overwhelming sense of dread came over us. It came over me. And it came over the dog. Because all of a sudden, she didn't want to hang out. She didn't want to beg for food. She didn't want to do anything. She jumped in the back of the Jeep and didn't want to come out. She sat there staring at the wood line, looking concerned. And I could feel her concern. And consequently, Shannon could feel the concern from me. She said she had an overwhelming feeling of dread, and so didn't I. And I've heard over the years that's something that absolutely happens. Now, hearing the, hearing the wood snapping... I tried to play it off, you know, maybe it's a moose walking through, maybe it's deer, but it wasn't. It wasn't footsteps, it was something that was already close to us, and it was crushing wood. It was crazy. And yes, the following day I went back there, but it was, it was summertime, and there was um, ferns every place. So it was much like the Pacific Northwest. If you were looking for footprints or evidence, it was incredibly hard to come by. And to be perfectly honest, at the time, I didn't know what to look for anyway. But I went back to look, and it was a long drive to get back there. But I wanted to see what was near our camp. And I did find some crushed up sticks that were about 
two to three inches in diameter next to the tent and it made no sense. They weren't rotten. Something with incredible strength crushed these bad boys. Now that story in itself is crazy, correct? But it absolutely happened. Myself, somebody else, and an animal all detected the exact same thing. But that wasn't even the craziest part. Now we're driving out of here around 11 o'clock at night. It is pitch black. You cannot see anything. And I don't know where I'm going. So I just start traveling down. On the way to the camp, we were going up the entire time. So I started going down. Now, ever since my father took me outside when I was nine years old at like three o'clock in the morning and showed me Saturn through a telescope, I've always been interested in astrophotography. And for whatever reason, I hadn't noticed the sky whatsoever at all until we were driving and we were a good distance away. And suddenly I just pulled over on the side of the road and got out and looked at the sky and could not believe it. I've never seen anything like it before and I've never seen anything like it since. And I have done astrophotography in the darkest parts of Texas in New Mexico, California, Death Valley, the Bonneville Salt Flats, Moab, etc. I had never seen anything like this. It looked like the sky at the Boston Museum of Science. It was that surreal. So after looking at the sky, we were still shook up and we still didn't know where we were. So we kept going down this long incredibly dark road. We're in the Green Mountains. We're in Vermont. There's no street lights. All you got is your headlights. So we're driving along and we come to some uh, properties. You can see some houses. So this is a good sign. We're close to town. And then Shannon points out this giant tree that's all lit up. And it wasn't lights. It was lit up in a way I have never seen before. And the lights in the trees looked exactly like eyes. This was in the summertime, they weren't lights. I'm not an idiot, nor is she, but that's what we saw. So we had a crazy experience, then we had a crazy sky that I've never seen before or since, and then we see a tree all lit up. How insane is that? Finally, we make it into a small town. We pull right out in front of a real hole in the wall motel. We get a room for the night. We wake up the next day and discover this. All over this town, and all the way back up to the campsite to look around for tracks the next day, every place, there were statues of Bigfoot. There were placards of Bigfoot. There were warning signs for Bigfoot crossing. There were national forest signs. There was a disappropriate amount of Bigfoot signage absolutely everywhere. I've never seen them in any other area quite like in this area. So it kind of put a point on this particular topic for us. Oh, and before we headed back up to the campsite in the morning to look around for any evidence of what drew, drove us off the mountain the night before, I stopped in and ordered, I think it was probably English muffin, egg and cheese, and I just happened to ask the woman working there, I said, do you guys ever have any strange occurrences? I didn't lead her. I didn't bait her. I didn't say anything. I said, do you ever have any strange occurrences around here? And she said, what, like Bigfoot? It was no big deal. And other people chimed in. Apparently, it was just no big deal. It was the last thing I was looking for. And I've carried this story around with me for nine years. And... I text my ex and simply say, can you write up what you remember from that night? And her story is identical to mine. You see what I'm saying? How crazy is that? And then when you put the dog in the mix, it's basically the cherry on the cake. She wasn't the world's most ferocious pit bull terrier because she raised her like a child. But I'd never seen her turn tail and run. Every time I walked her in the woods, she'd get into it with a deer or she'd, get, she'd always went after something turn tailed and ran. At any rate, that's not the only scary stories I have. I have several more, but for the brevity of this video, I'm going to leave it at this. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit that like, 
share, and subscribe. It helps the channel grow and it helps me. Leave a comment below and I will try to return the favor. Crazy things happen. I am out.